शिव शक्तुक्त यदि शक्त प्रभावित न चेदेव देव न खलु कुशल स्पंदी अथस्वाध्यंग हरिहर विरिंचादिरपी प्रणंतुम स्तोतुम वाकतमकृतपुण्या प्रभवती Namaste. So this is the conclusion of the ontology of Shakti series. And in this episode we show how all the pieces fit together. The uh, different views, the four views, Chatur Darshanam and the grantis or the knots or the obstacles on the path. And I have to credit Michael McClure because it was his insight that there's a relationship between the views and the grantis and then in a series of online private conversations over the last couple of weeks we worked out this relationship and confirmed it from both of our life histories see michael is also realized so we were able to confirm in both of our cases that our journey went through all these stages and so this was a, a wonderful thing because it gives us now the overview uh, the big picture of the spiritual path so i can't go through all of this because it's such detailed knowledge you should download the file the pdf file in the video description and take your time and study it and then use the comments here to ask questions that are relevant to this particular topic which is a very powerful one and can uh, lead to tremendous insights into the process of spiritual realization so now let's take a look at the basic chart of the four darshanas you've all seen this before several times so if there's any question about it now is the time to ask in the comments each of the darshanam or views has a specific audience which is determined according to their qualification and this corresponds with a, a classic vedic varna or social division into shudra vaishya kshatriya and brahmanas and then this is also shown as a percentage of the population and the yoga which each one is supposed to practice is given along with its result so take a good look at this chart understand this this is the basis uh, this is the uh, foundation of this understanding and it was given by shankaracharya in his commentary on vedanta so once you understand this chart you can very easily see where you are uh, most of us of course are going to be on the dvaita vada level and we have this idea that the world is real <laughs> that the soul is eternal and so on like that but form is not an adequate basis for eternality because form is always changing we see that forms go through six basic changes conception gestation birth growth production of byproducts dwindling and then finally the seventh step is death and rebirth again so the cycle keeps repeating itself and this is samsara but the real self with a capital s is unborn and can never be born because it uh, is eternal deathless so therefore only that which is beyond form can be eternal this is a basic philosophical truth so anyway <laughs> we've gone over the qualities of the different stages in some detail before i'm not going to go through that again but i want to take a look at the next chart 
which now shows the grantis. Granti literally means knot. It's a knot in the cord, huh? a, a kink in the pipe, <laughs> an obstacle or gate on the path. And until you uh, penetrate this gate, until you are able to remove this obstacle, you cannot progress further along the path. So what we're going to do in this uh, episode is look deeper into this process of self-realization and how the grantis can be overcome. Now you'll see there's a new column here called chakra. The Pashu or animalistic humans are stuck in the Muladhara chakra at the base of the spine. They're basically animals with two legs. But once a person develops religion, they move up to the Svarasthana chakra in the belly. This is basic human life, basic religious life. Then, once they are able to pass through the Brahma Granti, then they can move to the Manipur or heart chakra. And at this point, bhakti becomes the preferred yoga practice leading to prema. When prema is developed, they can pass through the Vishnu Granti and locate themselves in the Agnya Chakra between the eyebrows. And at that point, the process of Raja Yoga begins, leading to realization of Shunya or emptiness. Now this brings a person to the Rudra Granti. And if they can penetrate the Rudra Granti, they can reach the Sahasrara Chakra, the thousand petal lotus at the top of the head, and practice Jnana Yoga, which is the realization of Brahman. So this gives a little extra insight into the Grantis and how they can be overcome. In each case, the Granti that blocks our advancement is opened or untangled or penetrated by reaching the uh, pinnacle, the realization of the particular yoga for that level. For example, the Brahma Granti is overcome by gaining enough punya. The Vishnu Granti is overcome by gaining prema. And the Rudra Granti is overcome by realizing shunya. So let's look at the next chart. This is a more detailed look at the chakras and the grantis. Now, when a person is, is in Dvaita Vada, they think the world is real and that their body is themselves. So they're stuck in the Svarasthana chakra, which is in the belly, and they have to perform karma yoga to get enough punya to finally realize that the anamaya kosha, the gross body, the meat body, or the food body, is not the self. So once they transcend the anamaya kosha, then they can get to the next stage, vishishtadvaita, and the heart chakra practice bhakti until they realize prema. And at that point, they're in a position to transcend the pranamaya kosha, the energy body, which is the foundation of all emotion, feeling, sensation, emotion, and desires. So that leads to the practice of Raja Yoga. And when they finally realize shunya, or emptiness, that enables them to penetrate the Rudra Granti and transcend the Manamaya Kosha, the mental body. In other words, the realization of emptiness allows us to go beyond the mind. And that is the precondition for the final realization, which leads to the Sahasrara Chakra, Jnana Yoga, and Ajatavada, the view that the material world, the world of form, is never born. It doesn't really exist. It's only an appearance. 
And this is the complete self-realization, the complete enlightenment. One more chart. This chart shows very much the same thing as in the previous chart, except there are two new columns, attachment and doubt. So, for example, the Pashu, the animalistic human, is attached to the body, and his doubt is that there is no God. I can't see God, I can't sense him with my bodily senses, so there is no God. In other words, atheism. So the atheist human is actually a Pashu. He's actually an animal, two-legged animal. Uh, and it's not until one comes to worship God, usually because of a, an experience with death, uh, actually all of the breakthroughs, all, all of the transitions between these states are marked by death or death-like experiences. For example, in the Dvaita Vada, the attachment is to action. Uh, the Brahma Granti is the attachment to success and power. So one craves and is addicted to action as a means to attain these things. And the, the doubt in the Dvaita Vada is that Guru is wrong. Guru is telling, this world is unreal, but I see it as real. So that's, you know, a disagreement, that's a conflict. Maybe the Guru is wrong. Huh? I can't really trust the Guru. Guru is saying this world is unreal, but it sure looks real to me because I'm seeing it through the senses. Huh? So the Dvaita Vadi, even though he's religious to some degree, doesn't really believe in the instructions of the Shastra. Huh? He knows he's getting some benefit from it because he can feel as he accumulates punya that he becomes more and more fortunate. So if he is able to break through this attachment to success and power and clear the doubt that I am this body, he's able to transcend the Anamaya Kosha, the gross body, and attain the next stage, Vishishtadvaita. In Vishishta Dvaita, the attachment is emotion, rasa, which means a particular flavor of love, and rati, which means a particular flavor of desire. So, the doubt in this stage is that I cannot love perfectly. All my love is conditional. Huh? I love the things for which I have a taste, and all the rest I can't. I could care less about. <laughs> or I actually hate those things that I don't have taste for. So if this person, by practice of bhakti, develops prema, then he can give up the attachment to objects of love, realizing that actually everything is the object of love. God is the object of love. And realize that he is actually the source of love. Because the doubt in this stage is, I am not the source of love. Love is coming from somewhere else, huh? which is not true. So once this doubt is overcome, one can transcend the pranamaya kosha and reach the next stage, vivartavada. Now in vivartavada, because the, uh, the center of energy is the agnya chakra, one becomes attached to knowledge. Huh? And because of this, one feels or doubts, I don't know enough. I need more knowledge. Huh? <laughs> one begins to collect knowledge like this. But knowledge, of course, is not enough. One also needs to practice meditation, Raj Yoga. <clears throat> and if Raj Yoga is perfected, one realizes Shunya, goes beyond the mind and overcomes the attachment to individual existence. Uh, in other words, he's able to die consciously and overcome the doubt that consciousness without form is incomplete. 
This is a very advanced stage that very few people ever reach. But if one reaches it, one can transcend the monomaya uh, kosha and attain the ajatavada. And this is the actual aim of self-realization. Now, as I said, Michael and I went back through all our spiritual experiences and we were able to confirm that this is the actual structure of the path. Now, that's very interesting because uh, Michael and I had no contact prior to just a couple of months ago. And we attained realization by very different paths. I mean, some things were the same, but a lot of things were different. Yet, we passed through the same sequence of realizations and stages of consciousness. So that's very significant. That shows that there is kind of a uh, unified field theory of self-realization and that this is given in the Vedas. We also, uh, I mean, we already went over the fact that the Vedas preach in terms of stories to allow their interpretation depending on the audience. Uh, because what's true for a person in a lower stage will not be true for a person in a higher stage. They need a different teaching. And it's very rare to find a guru or teacher who understands all four stages. So what happens is a person has one guru when they're in Dvaitavada, and then they need another guru for Vishishta Dvaita and so on. So that means the path is segmented or divided into different stages. And <clears throat> the different uh, barriers to self-realization are actually due to our own attachments and doubts. Once we can overcome those, the path is seen as unobstructed. And that is the real truth. Uh, the real truth is... <laughs> There is no enlightenment and unenlightenment. There is no Buddha. There is no God. Uh, <clears throat> there is no you and I duality. There is no subject, no object. Uh, there is only Brahman. Everything that exists is actually Brahman. And all apparent duality is only an illusion, maya, that which is not. But if we try to tell this to someone in Dvaitavada, they simply become confused and maybe angry. <laughs> so the Vedic teaching has to be interpreted through these different stages to give the appropriate teaching to the person who uh, is at a particular stage. And that's why we are going back to the uh, Shastras, the scriptures, and going through the uh, Tripura Rahasya, uh, the Mahatmya Kanda, because that gives the background, that gives the lower level stages. Then one who is qualified can go on to the next Kanda, the Jnana Kanda, and they'll actually get it. Uh, so, if you do your homework, if you go through all these preliminaries, then you will certainly be able to pierce through the knots and realize the unobstructed eternal path. Aung Tatsat. Aung Harihi Aung.